The Word of God today presents us with the opportunity to see marriage as an institution created by God. It also highlights the importance of indissolubility of the marriage covenant, showing us that there is no place for divorce and adultery. Jesus' love for children further urges us to reach out with love and respect for every child who needs to grow up freely as a human person. We join the Archdiocese in celebrating a day of thanksgiving to our God Almighty. Our entrance in blessing and honor. we shall be praying for all your personal intentions. It is the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time and it's the day of Thanksgiving in the Archdiocese of Bombay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Praise you, we pray. 
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock, and to the birds of the heavens, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs, closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that was that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word is, May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. All together. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Blessed are all those who fear the labor of your hands you shall be you will be blessed and prosper may the Lord bless us all the days of our lives your wife like a fruitful wine in the heart of your Children like shoots of the olive around your table. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, 
should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. some Pharisees came up and in order to test Jesus asked is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife and he answered them what did Moses command you they said Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away and Jesus said to them because of your hardness of heart he wrote you this commandment but from the beginning of creation God made them male and female Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. For therefore God is joined together, let not man separate. And in the house the disciples asked him again about this matter and he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them laying his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In a certain African country, in a rather remote area, there was a small chapel and about a hundred Catholics. Now among them was a couple that was married for over 40 years. She was the only wife he had in spite of the tradition of that particular place which allowed him more than one wife. It was an amazing fact that he didn't take more than one wife because they were childless. There had been tremendous pressure on him over the years to divorce his wife or to take another wife. But he was adamant that he would never divorce his wife, even though it would have been easy to do so in that particular place, according to tradition. In our modern culture today, this would have been accepted as rather normal. And he always replied, I love her and I will always be faithful to her. But it was almost unthinkable given the culture he lived in that he remained faithful to the one wife. Their childlessness was always looked upon as the woman's fault. Women had little standing and hardly any rights in that particular culture. In the gospel today, my dear brothers and sisters, 
the Pharisees are out to trap Jesus on the question of divorce. The law handed down by Moses allowed it in certain cases. If Jesus declared otherwise, he would have been seen as going against the Mosaic law. Equally dangerous for Jesus was the fact that Herod had taken his brother Philip's wife Herodias, so Jesus could be seen in some way of accusing Herod for this. We know that John the Baptist was beheaded precisely for condemning Herod's decision. It's interesting to notice, my dear friends, the way the question to Jesus was put. Is it against the law for a man to divorce his wife? Not is it against the law for a woman to divorce her husband? Divorce was a very real issue for the Jews in the time of Jesus. And indeed, it's today the same case in many Christian churches. For the Jews, there were two schools of thought regarding divorce. One had such a strict interpretation that the other. The rabbis from this school of thought would have said that adultery alone was the only reason for divorce. But in the other school of thought, the rabbis were much more liberal and lenient, saying the man could divorce his wife for almost any reason, even to the extent of saying he could divorce her if she burned his dinner or if he found another woman more attractive than his wife. Jesus widens out the discussion recalling the creation in the book of Genesis, where it is said that man and woman were created equally by God and had a complementary role. Jesus says that women are not things, they are not subjects, they do not belong to men as a bit of furniture or perhaps as garment does. Marriage on the other is really the union of equal beings. And this is the first account of creation in the first chapter of the book of Genesis. Today's Genesis text comes from chapter 2, which can be misinterpreted to mean that as woman came from man, she has to be his helpmate and is therefore inferior to man. Both man and woman, my dear friends, are made in God's image and likeness. Jesus tells us quite clearly that divorce has never ever been part of God's plan. God's dream is that a man and woman who married are called to mirror the fidelity of God towards each one of us. A married couple is asked to reflect the covenant love of God for his people. A God who never fails in his promise of fidelity to each one of us. He will never abandon us. But God knows, as Jesus knew, that we do not live in an ideal world. We are not ideal people. It's very important to have ideals before us and to live by them. But being human, by being sinners, we will fail despite our most noble intentions. We are dishonest if we think otherwise, my dear friends. Any couple married for a long time will say that it takes a lot of I do's for a man and woman to become husband and wife. It takes a lot of dying to oneself. And we all know from experience that there will be a lot of mistakes, a lot of compromises called for. But God's grace, His Spirit is always there to empower us if we call on it. Who doesn't take, make mistakes from time to time? And this is equally true of us in our priesthood and religious life. It's a process, it's lifetime's work, and I believe each one of us is always moving and journeying towards perfection. The church must proclaim the ideal of fidelity in marriage. This is God's dream for each one of us, but it can happen and does that two partners in marriage may be unable to sustain their relationship so that their marriage no longer really functions. It has become impossible to live in peace with each other without destroying each other. And here again, the church has to echo the gospel. And this is the good news of today's gospel. It has to proclaim the message of God's mercy, of His liberating forgiveness. Pope Francis constantly returns to this theme. 
God's infinite mercy. Are we heeding either of them, God or our Holy Father? The gospel lives every person, gives every person a future. There is no human failure so great that is completely hopeless and no longer open to God's mercy. God is the God of the second chance and the third chance and the fourth chance and on and on and on. Do we not all know this from our own human experience? Is a relationship that does not work out the only exception? Not according to God. Let's pray in a very special way at this Eucharist, my dear brothers and sisters, for those who are, first of all, happily married. Let's pray for those discerning marriage. And in a very, very important way, in a special way, let's pray for those who are struggling with their marriages. We profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sins he was crucified and upon his Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, when you created man and woman, you brought them together so that marriage may be recognized today as your indispensable gift to the human race. Listen to our prayers for the grace to always live faithful to your divine plan. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. All together. <laughs> Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, bishops, priests, religious and lay faithful, that they may never tire of upholding the principles that govern the Christian marriage, especially during this amorous Latisha, year of the family. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer, for all married couples, that they may experience the joys of love and unity, which lead them to respect each other, and that they may have the courage to weed out whatever disturbs a healthy relationship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all children, that they may be seen as a precious gift that comes from the hand of God, thus enabling them to grow up in family and society, experiencing the freedom and respect they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all of us here present, that the Eucharist we celebrate may strengthen us to build holy Catholic families where there is love and understanding in our homes, thus making us true witnesses in a world that often fails to uphold these values. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the many blessings and gifts received from the Lord, the plentiful rain, the good harvest, the generous assistance of so many during the COVID-19 pandemic and other innumerable personal favors, we raise a prayer of thanksgiving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the intentions we now pray in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, the creator of the human race and giver of all good gifts, who will that man and woman live in happiness and unity? Listen to the prayers of thanksgiving we bring to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. I offer to him simple gifts. Says that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. I accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on his constant intercession, in your presence be the life for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis R. Pope and Oswald R. Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for, for the, the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us all for each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and then my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. A communion him a new commandment.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. You are announced the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our recession hymn, Bind Us Together. Thank you.